Hey everyone, I hope you're having a nice week so far. Today, I'm really excited to talk about another Zealot build that I've been crafting for a specific job. As of late, I've been dipping back into doing more Maelstrom missions. However, lots of players are struggling with fighting multiple monstrosities at one time. While that might be on the player, there are definitely builds that can help you take down these monstrosities with ease. And that is primarily what I want to show you all today. I've made my zealot build focusing on helping the team with any big elite threats and of course our main focus on taking down bosses and monstrosities very quickly. So enough chit chat, let's talk about the build. For our main weapon we want to use the Crucius Mark II Thunderhammer. This is a great weapon with lots of versatility. I wanted to make sure that I'm using this mostly to take down monstrosities and elites so I went with having more crit hit damage and more damage to unyielding enemies as my perk choices. The blessings are what would carry this weapon to a whole new level. With Thrust, we can get more power based on the charge time of our heavy attacks, and with Skull Crusher, we can get stacks of damage to enemies that are staggered. Now, the special attack for the hammer can stagger elites quite easily, so you don't really have any issues there. But with monstrosities, it's a little different. Normally, somebody will move to stagger the boss with a nade or even an ability rush. We will not be the one doing that. However, our ability will definitely play a factor later on. Our focus when a monstrosity is present will be to land the first hit before anyone else pulls aggro. And not to mention the hammer is great for dodging and creating gaps in a horde if needed, so chain heavy attacks and keep dodging in between the charge ups. For our secondary weapon, I wanted everyone to have a bit of choice here, so I wanted to say use what you find most effective for you. But I also don't like the dependency when it comes to worrying about my team. I found that with the shredder auto pistol, you can get away with ammo consumption and focusing a majority of your shots on specialists. I chose my perks to help with damage to mutants and for a boost in range damage towards specialists. This is solely going to be used whenever I need to get rid of pesky disablers or unarmored specialists. Our hammer can decimate any of the threats that are in armor anyways. As for the blessings, I decided to go with Blaze Away, which gives you more power on continuous fire. Basically, just unload your clip into any threats that are pushing you back. And with Pinning Fire, which is a great blessing that works well with the synergy of our hammer, this blessing grants us more power for every enemy that we stagger. Since this weapon can stagger enemies quite quickly on critical hits and weak spot hits, this was a no-brainer for me. I like the Shredder here more than any of the other weapons because of the reliability on ammo and being able to take down multiple specialists with no issues. The reload and mobility is also much quicker than most of the other weapons that I'd use for those encounters. However, with that being said, you can use any other weapon with a decent ammo pool since this build's main focus is killing the bigger enemies with our hammer. As for the Curios, I went with two of them having maximum toughness and another one giving me a wound. The perks that I mainly go after though are toughness regen speed, some combat ability regen, and at least one stamina regen. Those are the three that I felt were mostly mandatory for these curios, however you can take any resistance that you want, and maybe an ally revive speed so you can use your ability for other purposes outside of damage. Okay, that's going to be it for the loadout, but let's talk about our talent tree for a minute. This build relies solely on knowing what your abilities are, and how to manipulate them into your favor. Since our role in the team is going to be focused on killing monstrosities quickly and effectively, I want to briefly talk about all the skills and passives that you need to know to make this work. Let's start with our keystone ability, Inexorable Judgment. This grants us stacks of momentum as we move. Momentum gives us a faster attack speed, ranged attack speed, and 1% damage per stack. Getting this to 20 stacks should always be your goal when going in for your first hit on a monstrosity. With our modifier, we want to have Retributor Stance, which will replenish 2% of our toughness per stack of momentum spent. Move, hit stuff, get toughness, rinse, repeat. Now let's talk about our main ability. Shroud Field is pretty great, but only incredible if timed correctly. Upon using our ability, we're hidden from all monstrosities and enemies, with the only exception being Demon Host, as they can still see you while you're invisible. We want this ability for all the stat bonuses that we earn while activating it. For 3 seconds, we gain 20% movement speed and 100% to our backstab damage, finesse damage, and we're guaranteed to hit a critical on our opening attack. With those modifiers, I wanted to go with Perfectionist which grants you an additional 50% finesse and backstab damage. This is what pushes the threshold on killing monstrosities extremely quickly. To help mitigate the cooldown increase, I opted in for Pious Cutthroat which restores 20% of our ability cooldown on any backstab kills. This is probably the best ability to feed into our cooldown reduction. Backstab kills are incredibly easy as long as you're protecting your team and you're going after elites. And as much as I love the nades on the Zealot, I've really started to enjoy my throwing knives way more with Shroudfield. So for my Blitz, I went with Blades of Faith, as it's incredibly easy to score specialist kills even at a range. Gaining more knives is even easier. 
Killing any elites or special enemies with a melee attack regens a single knife, and any ammo that we find will also resupply us. Since I wanted to focus on our damage output mainly because we're using the hammer to kill everything, I went with Backstabber, which gives us an additional 20% more damage on any backstab hits. And I went with Desperation, which grants us an additional 20% melee damage whenever our stamina is depleted. With Duelist, we can actually gain an additional 50% weak spot and critical damage boost on any successful dodge. Since Horde Clearing is going to be a main factor with this weapon as well, Purge the Unclean is very useful for crowd control against infested enemies and our damage output is going towards unyielding enemies as it increases our damage overall by 20%. Grievous Wounds raises our stagger by 50% whenever we hit an enemy's weak spot with our hammer. The passive Scourge grants all critical hits the ability to apply a bleed stack. This also gives us a 10% critical hit chance for a few seconds and can even stack. This is the passive that will cycle through to finish off any monstrosities with ease if they survive the first attack. The stain grants us 5% damage towards our next enemy, and it could stack up to 5 times. This means hitting up to 5 enemies with a wide swing can grant us up to 25% more damage for our next hit. This is paired really nicely with our next passive. Sustained Assault grants us 4% melee damage for 5 seconds whenever we hit an enemy, and it stacks 5 times. These two skills are great for clearing the horde because upon reaching max stacks, you will actually stay at maximum damage until there's nothing left to hit. Thy Wrath Be Swift is a must have since we don't want to be stunned by any melee attacks. Following through with heavy swings will save you a ton and you'll be able to push back the horde with ease. The great part about this passive is that it keeps you in the action without being stun locked. On top of that, the movement speed allows you to make some room and get closer to teammates if needed. The rest of our passives allow us to use our secondary with more reliability and keeping us safe in a constant flow of toughness. Loner will be our main aura ability, as most of the time we're going to either be behind enemies or we're going off to rescue a teammate. However, even with this we don't want to be fighting alone, but if we need to clutch up we can. A nice flow state of toughness can be easily earned when we have a coherency bonus of at least 2. Next up is Anoint in Blood. This gives us up to plus 25% to our base range damage. The Shredder can melt targets up close anyways, so this just enhances that option if needed. Dance of Death gives us negative 75% spread and negative 50% recoil on successfully dodging. This makes our target acquisition much easier whenever we're under pressure. With Enduring Faith, you get a plus 50% toughness damage reduction on any critical hit. And with enemies within, enemies without, you can replenish 2.5% of your toughness per second while within 5 meters of at least 3 enemies. I wanted options to keep my character alive easily when it comes to controlling the horde encounters. These are great passives that keep us safe from harm and regenerate our toughness without even having to attack. And finally, to make sure that we can output our damage quickly, we want Faithful Frenzy which bumps our melee attack speed up by 10%. As for my operative modifiers, I wanted to have more melee damage, movement speed, toughness, toughness damage reduction, and stamina. The build does require a little bit of practice to master, so I do recommend going into the lower threats until you understand how to apply your stacks efficiently. Once you have that locked down, most bosses should go down in at least a couple swings. Hell, you can even kill Chaos Spawns and Plague Ogrens in a single hit with this build. My only intention with this build was to make something fun that also plays into the power fantasy. This has been a build that I only now started really appreciating when it comes to making it easier for my team to survive missions. Using Shroud Field has multiple uses to it too. You can sneak to cover, revive teammates, and take out ranged targets with a knife throw while not being suppressed by enemies. All in all, I run this build pretty often, and people are usually perplexed at how quickly the boss dies. The only real challenge of this build is finding a hammer with decent stats, and at least one of those perks and blessings attached. Once you get that, the sky's the limit. Regardless though, I hope you get a chance to try out this build, especially if you want to flex a little bit. Anyways, I'm going to go bully some more bosses, but in case you forgot, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Enjoy the rest of the video. Take care.
Retribution. Once on Magistratum, supply track Chiron 30 Iota. You can proceed to your destination. Right. Tracking. Isolating targets. Game go. No turning back. I won't let you win.
fortifying eruption. Enemy sighted. multiple targets. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. That's okay. Things are gonna be okay.